Hi everyone, welcome to I Am Possible live talk show. My guest today is attorney Nandini Nair. She is partner in the Immigration and Naturalization Group of Greenspoon Martyr and member of the firm's management committee. She represents business and corporate clients in all matter of employment-based immigration and represents individual in family-based immigration matters. Nandini Nair. I am the um, partner at the New Jersey office. I am part of the immigration department at Greenspoon Modern. So my work is business immigration. I specifically deal with a lot of tech companies and marketing and branding companies and we do visas, employment-based green cards. We do family-based um, also naturalizations, but we help to bring individuals into the United States to work for companies. Welcome to the show, Nandini. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Honor for having you on our show. It's great to have you here. And I'm so happy that women like you is coming on our show <laughs> and proving that impossible means I'm possible. <laughs> Everything is possible in life. <laughs> I believe that truly. Absolutely. So Nandini, we would really like to know about your journey, like how you started your journey and it's been 20 years you are in this field and kindly share this and because it's going to be inspiration for so many young generation, you know? Mm. Um, well, first of all, I was uh, born in India to just start my journey and I came here when I was eight um, in the late 1970s, so 79. So I've been in the country for a long time, wow. but uh, yeah, but it was a tough journey. It was uh, not easy being in this country in those days. There weren't that many Indians and, um, you know, it, it's very different from today in 2020 when I can go to um, a town or to a street or even on TV and I can see someone of my color, right? You can identify that. That was not the case when I was growing up. So, um, I, I struggled a lot in the beginning trying to adapt to the American culture. Mm -hmm. um, people who grew up in that time will know that, you know, for parents mm -hmm. raising their children, they were so scared, right? They didn't know this new world. Uh, the culture is extremely different from yeah. the culture they were raised in. Um, so. I remember just going to school in here, elementary school, um, middle school, high school, just getting picked on, pushed around. Um, you know, we, my brother and I were walking down the street one day. This was in high school. We got eggs thrown at us from the school buses. Really? Oh you know, yeah. I mean, he got beaten up and um, just because, you know, we were different. And there was so much racist stuff at, thrown at us in those days. This is the 1980s. Um, you know, early 90s, it, it got so much better when I got to college, but it was some tough days in those um, early years when we were in this country. We didn't know English when we first came. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so my parents had to work. So they left my brother and I at home, which would be against the law. Almost. Oh, yeah, now, of course. I, you know, of course. I was eight and my brother was six, mm -hmm. um, but they had to go to work yeah. and we would uh, watch TV and we would figure out English through the TV. Um, and, you know, we had to go to school the following year. We didn't really know a lot. Um, and we just had to learn to adjust and figure it out. And that's really a lot of the things that I feel like I've um, learned as a life lesson is trying to look at challenges and trying to figure it out. I always tell everyone. I'm a solutions oriented person. I like to, really it's not that I don't have problems. I, everybody has problems, yeah. everybody has challenges, but I'm like that type of person, like let's figure out a solution. Let's get to Makes this. Sense. You know? Yes, totally. Yeah. But the journey, like, um, like, you know, just asking, I came here when I was eight. I went to school here. I went to college in New York. I grew up in New York. I went to law school in New York. Um, my first job out of school was in immigration and, um, something about it just felt so personal to me. Um, everybody always asked me, why did you do immigration of yeah, all things? Yeah, I wanted things? to ask you how your interest inclined toward this line, like how, how you became a lawyer. Like, Yeah, it, it, it was actually an accident. It was like I got a job uh, through a, you know, in a small little law firm d doing immigration in uh, New York City that my parents knew the um, people. 
And I started working there and I, I never, never thought I would do immigration. It's not something I looked at when I was in law school. They didn't even have that. I, I did like international law, but I started there and I was like, oh, this is very interesting. And you know why? Because it was personal, because I'm an immigrant. My parents are immigrants. And it just felt like when I was working on something, there's somebody real, somebody's face in front of me. You know, it's not just a name, um, like a number. And I could like talk to them on the phone and I, and it was like, I could connect with them. Yes. And so that really made me just kind of stick with the field. And I've been doing it, like you said, 20 years. And it's been something that has been so gratifying to me. Um, there are hard, hard days. I'm not going to say there isn't. There's really hard days in this fact, in this area, but generally, it has been one of the most um, profoundly fulfilling things I've done in my life is being an immigration attorney because, you know, um, helping people. Yeah, I wanted to ask you what is the best part you feel of being a lawyer. It's helping them. It's it's absolutely helping them. You know how many people like they might have been here a few years and finally they get their green card and they call me and they'll send me sweets and they'll send me and I'm just like that's fine. You know, just that or like, you know, getting their cases through or um, almost just sometimes holding their hand through the process. I have wives sometimes call me and they'll be like, oh my god, I'm so nervous about my husband's H1B and I, you know, like just or something situation and helping them and understanding that. Um, it, it's really um, keeps me going because like I guess there are days, there are hard days, but those moments, those that 10%, 15%, 20% of that keeps me going every single day in this job. So can you be more descriptive in what all type of cases you are handling? I, I do all business immigration and family-based uh, immigration. So business immigration, I help companies throughout the country. I have clients all over uh, the U.S. So it's not like I have just Jersey clients or New York clients all over. I um, help with like all visas, H1s, L's, O's, green card applications. And then I do family-based, right? I do um, marriage to a U.S. citizen or, you know, fiancé visas, uh, green cards for parents and things like that. So I do all those type of um, type of cases. I do religious workers. I do performers. Oh, I do, wow. yeah, I do extraordinary <laughs> ability cases. You know, I do, I represent like fashion people and stuff like that. So I, I do a lot of different types of things, but it's mainly that I don't do like, um, deportation and, okay. you know, uh, <laughs> criminal work and all of that. I don't do that. I, I sit in my office and I help people that way. So. Yeah, you like to get get hugs and kisses, I think. So. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's really, it's a good day. I mean, when I, uh, I can honestly tell you, every day I open up my emails and I check to see which cases got approved and things like that. Yeah. To this day, it, you know, I, I still get a little thrill. Like, oh, okay, that case got approved. Good. You know, oh, and to have a job like that for 20 years, you know, that means I picked the right field. This this is what I was supposed to do. And that's how I think about it. Yeah. You know? Looking at the glow on your face, I can feel that you love <laughs> your work. Of course. Of course. Uh, I do. I'm here on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sunday and a working day. Oh, my gosh. What oh, a dedication. I, I, this is very <laughs> typical. This is very typical day, uh, weekend. I at least work one day out of the weekend. I usually work, um, you know, till eight, nine o'clock during the week. You know, it's it's what you got to do, you know, for your clients, for the job. So, so you are connected to so many associations also. So yeah, I would like to know about that also. Um, and how well, was your experience with them? It's been good. Um, one of my biggest things that I've, I'm uh, very focused on also is diversity and inclusion. So I'm president of the New Jersey Diversity, um, Tri-State Diversity Council. What that is, is a organization for um, New York, New Jersey and Connecticut that focuses on diversity and inclusion initiatives. Diversity meaning, you know, diverse thought, diverse 
uh, people in hiring, recruitment. Inclusion is including everybody at the table in these type of conversations. Almost all organizations have a diversity and inclusion uh, person or they have a council. Um, I, I'm a member of the firm's diversity council. I am in the federal bar diversity council. I'm in the Immigration Association diversity council. It's a really important thing for me. And my specific agenda within that area is to talk and advocate um, the immigrant viewpoint. Um, okay. You know, for me as a immigrant, which is what I consider myself, even though I grew up here um, as a woman, uh, what are the challenges I face when I'm trying to climb that corporate ca um, ladder? What, what, do you, what do I deal with every single day, you know? Um, and there's there are a lot of things, you know, how it's very hard to explain being, um, you know, Indian and some of those um, cultural things that I have to balance, you know, um, certain people thinking that I, you know, as an Indian woman, I should be more in the kitchen, <laughs> you know, versus being very career oriented and, um, you know, how I have to navigate that with trying to um, grow my career. Um, and sometimes corporate you know, corporate leadership does not understand those cultural challenges that I might face. Or as an immigrant, I, I don't know the culture as well, right? If, some, if you just come here maybe 10, 15 years ago, maybe five years ago, do you understand cultural references? You know, you may not. And does that set you back from getting a promotion? Does that set you back from growing your career in the American corporate world? We need to have that conversation. We should be at the table and there should be discussions about what we face out there. So that's an important thing that I'm part of. Um, and I, I'm doing this in a lot of um, organizations and having conversations about um, what you might face. I might face, you know, somebody, some, somebody else who just came here a few years ago might face. Let's have that conversation is what I think. So, so that's, nice that people I would uh, refer and uh, to say that you they should connect with you. You're such a wonderful person, you know. Like, you know, uh, at these points and the cases you are handling, uh, there is a lot of stress in people's mind and you mm -hmm. need someone who can really take care of your matter. It's really very nice and I think so you must be handling them so well, you know. You are so nice and generous. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, sometimes I, you know, I do lose my patience sometimes, <laughs> but uh, I'm not perfect. Uh, but I, I do feel sympathy and empathy. So one of the biggest things I look at um, when I practice and even with my team, right, I want I don't hire people who are not empathetic to the situation. Yeah. Um, you have to put yourself in your client's shoes. You have to understand how difficult of a journey they must have. They left their countries, you know, for better opportunities. Um, and they might have been here for 15 years, you know, or seven years, 10 years, whatever it is. They have children who have know nothing else. If you don't understand getting a denial is going to be a, almost life and death for them, then you can't be a good lawyer in this field. Yeah. I, I just don't think you can do it. Then it, your clients, you have to be partners with your clients. That's what I think, you know, and I always tell that to my clients. I'm your partner in this journey. Your success, my success. My success, your success. So true. And that's how it works. So what is the most difficult case you have handled in your journey? Um... I would say the past two years since um, the latest administration has come into power has been one of the most difficult times in the past 20 years. Um, things that were very routine and simple and could be um, almost a guarantee. You know, when you file something, I, I don't have such assurances. And that's hard, you know, to manage clients' expectations um, it, because they may be like, well, you did this to me for me three years ago. How come? I'm getting this question and, you know, trying to understand and say, hey, the law oh, is different now. You know, um, every day in the past two years, three years has been extremely difficult and challenging. I've never faced such hard times with um, certain cases and things that I used to do all the time with no problems. Um, and what's been going on. Um, and I don't expect it to get any better. That's the thing. Like, you know, I think that um, 
way this administration kind of focuses on certain things, it, it just continue to be challenging for everybody. Um, but we have to remain hopeful. That's what I tell my clients. I will do my best. I will try to remain hopeful. I will be honest. I will be straightforward. Um, you know, I'm not one of these lawyers who just takes cases just to take cases. I, I'm not that person. This is somebody's life. I'm not playing with anybody's life. Uh, I want to sleep. I believe in karma. I believe in all these things. Um, and I'm really about, you know, trying to do the best job I can and being honest. So when something is not going to work or I think there's going to be problems and stuff. But um, the hardest situation has been the past couple of years. Just the way the administration's been going. So, and of course, we're about to face a huge hardship coming now, yeah, right? With of course, this I'm also crisis. worried about that. Of course, yes, it's going to be bad, I think so. It, it's going to be really bad. It's going to be really bad. Um, I'm hearing some news already, you know, from my clients that they have to lay off people already, right? And people who are in tech and staffing contractors, right? There's a lot of them. Um, they're not the client and clients are saying that, Hey, we're putting a hiring freeze or we're not doing any more of this. Um, that's going to be hard. Of course. Of so course. This we're COVID going 19 to... uh, will make a major impact on economy. I think so. It's going to be there. Yeah. I'm kind of really worried. I'm praying God that things should settle down soon. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. we get a vaccine for that. And, um, I would like to ask you, how come you're out of your home today? <laughs> you are in your office, you should have been in your home. <laughs> yes, well, there's an exception for lawyers. They said law firms can stay open as long as um, to run critical missions. So what I did is I'm taking the hit. I send my team home to work from home, and I'm coming in every day to keep the office running, and, op and I'll take the risk because I'm not going to do that to my team. Um, so I'm kind of working um, to keep everything still you know, stable as much as I can. Um, what we do in immigration cannot be done remotely, oh, a majority oh. of it. We have to send out physical files. The government is not um, technologically capable of filing online. So I have to, you know, send physical files out. Who's so going to do that? I want to ask, like, with this COVID-19, has it make impact on uh, lawyers and their workings also? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's going to be very... Um, impactful on us um you know we have to think about our own hiring we have to think about staff and do we have to lay off people um wh where is it going to impact on business because what i do immigration in business is we do work permits right on a very simple level right that that's what we do <laughs> to have process a work permit there has to be work yes. if there's no work there's no work permits to process then there's no business for immigration attorneys. So there's going to be a dramatic impact from this disease on my business, my practice, um, that I, I I am very much aware of. Um, and there's tremendous anxiety among my clients about how they're going to continue their business or for individuals who've already been laid off. You know, they're, they're H1 people who have already been laid off. Yes. Oh it's only been weak what, it's been 15 days, 10 days since yep. we started this journey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're already laid off. So imagine what's yet to come, you know? I know, so, and a huge impact on stock market also. Yeah, no, it's an impact on everyone. And I can personally tell you as an individual, I am forever changed from this situation, like forever. I don't know that when I will next travel and get on a plane, you know, because I don't know if this is going to be sitting around in the air on plane seats. And I, I don't know. Right. Oh, so scary. Quick, I, I yeah. thought about that. Oh, my God. I, 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 yeah. You have to think about it because I do a lot of events. I speak at a lot of events. Mm -hmm. I go to a lot of events. I'm like, I don't know that I can do that. When can I do that? You know, um, so I travel. For me, it's going to be on a personal level, on a professional level, on a business level, it's going to be stopped. Um, the stock market, you know, I'm, am I going to turn into one of those people from the Great Depression who's going to be hiding my money in the mattress, you know, instead of the stock market because we just lost a ton of money, you know. Okay. Um, so I think on a very personal level, we are going to change as people certain 
frivolous spending we might have all been doing. We're all going to be nervous now, yes. right? Yes. It, so just that kind of stuff is, um, it, it makes me anxious. It makes me nervous. And I'm just, you know, trying to be hopeful. I'm hoping this there will be an end to this. I tell everybody, if I knew there's an end, I can get through anything. It's not knowing when this will end that makes this so torturous. So. No, we have to fight with the situation. And together we can. I yeah. To keep the hopes high. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. So tell fighting. me one thing, like how you keep a balance? Like I see like you're, you're like dedicating so much of your time and like yeah. for your work. So how you keep a balance in your family and work? Like it's so difficult. It, it is. It, it's it's um, very hard some days. Um, I tell people this, that I fail at something every day. Whether that day I fail as being a wife or whether I, the next day I fail at being a mother, or the third day I fail at being a lawyer. You know, some day, each day I'm failing in some part. I, there isn't some sort of magic to balancing all of this out every single day. You do the best you can. Um, I'm very uh, conscious of time management, so I'm very productive. I, I get up in the morning earlier, you know, um, and I don't waste time. That's just who I was even as a little kid. Like, I, I was, I'm a multitasker. Even I, I remember when I was like 10 being a multitasker um but there's no magic to any of this Rashmi it's um it's tough you know uh, to balance it all and I do the best I can each single day I'm sure you know my kids some days oh. miss me a lot and uh, you know and I miss them and uh, other days my work suffers because <laughs> I'm out doing something for them but we have to do our the best we can each day. But so you must that's be a role model for your kids, of course, you know, because uh, seeing the dedication, what you have towards your work, they will also do the same. That's what I'll feel, you know. Well, I have sons, so I hope I always tell them, make sure you marry some woman like mama. <laughs> 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 yeah, if you're busy with work, no time to fight with anyone. That's what I feel <laughs> always. You know, it's good to be busy and your work is your best friend. That's what I always feel. That is it's so a big cool. part of me. Of yeah. Like you have I, achieved so much is because of your hard work. And I always believe hard work pays. That's what it is. And that's what we see in you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, I, I honestly believe that uh, that's the only way to success is hard work. I mean, I like I told you before, you're super successful because I see you working hard every single day. You know, there isn't a day I don't see you <laughs> online and doing stuff. And it's the same way, Rashmi, there, there's no um, there's no trick. You know, there's no shortcut to this. It's all just working hard. It's hustling every day. I pray for people and like my kids. I hope you find something that you're passionate about, right? Um, I hope you like what you do because if that's if that's true, then the hustle will probably naturally come, you know. And I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I like what I do. It, it was an accident, but it was a great accident for me, you know. Turned my life around. Mm -hmm. How nice! So uh, before we end this show, Nandini, I would like to have a message from you from for the people who want to pursue their career in the field of law? Um, I am all for it. I think that if you want to, if you truly believe in the law and believe in justice and in whatever you do, right, whether whatever area of law you do, I, I would advocate to pursue it. And I, I really think for women especially. Um, I'm a big promoter of other women. I think you have to uplift women we're all sisters um and i am there for any woman i mean I, i'm not saying i'm knocking any man down but any woman who wants to go into being a lawyer um if if they need any advice or any information or anything i am absolutely there go for it you can do anything you want in life it's all possible thank you so much nandini and one thing i should say you're very beautiful <laughs> <laughs> so you are a beauty with that. purpose that's, that's good makeup Marshmi. good makeup that's what it is <laughs> no you look gorgeous and I I, I, sh I always wanted to tell you that you should have become an actress if not lawyer then you never know age is just a number <laughs> oh no 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 this is impossible means I am possible and that's you <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, okay. Nandini. Thank you so much for being part of the show, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rashmi. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.